a recent study in England showed that uh, they're killing over 10,000 people a year by uh, restricting and, and refusing health care, uh, mainly to the elderly. Uh, so, you, you know, you need to quit listening to this left-wing nonsense you hear on the major network, which is nothing but idiotic propaganda, and start doing your own research, start uh, looking deeply into this and educating your children. You know, yeah, you said, what can we do about this? Well, education plays a big part because first you have to understand what's going on, the methodology that they're going to use and that they're using. Uh, it's the only way to fight it, and you've got to educate your children. You can't just send them off to a university and they come back this brainwashed left-wing radical extremist. Uh, and unfortunately, most parents are not equipped to... to uh, uh, combat that. They, when their children come home spewing all this Marxist Leninist talk, uh, the parents don't know how to refute it because they don't really understand the American system. They don't understand the free market. They don't understand uh, the the dangers of centralization and collectivism. You foresaw exactly how it would be implemented with just stunning accuracy to the T. So, A, what is the state of it? How is their takeover going? How is their dismantling going? B, how do we reverse it? What's coming next if we don't reverse it? I mean, give us your perspectives, your diagnosis. Well, it's much further advanced than most people realize. We're, we're very close uh, to a totalitarian system. Uh, the, the takeover of America, people don't understand, since we were the uh, the leading power in the world. Uh, this is the plum that the, the collectivists have always wanted. If they take America, they own the world, because most of the rest of the world is dependent on the United States. The United States has always been uh, the resistance to this collectivist wave taking over the world. Now, if you look at Europe, a lot of Europeans uh, are starting to wake up they're fed up with collectivism. They want individual uh, rights and freedom. They're, they're seeing the collectivist uh, welfare state and what it does to human beings, uh, how it destroys lives, it destroys family, it destroys society. So they're, they're ready for something different. They just don't know how to do it because this generation in Europe, uh, a great number of them have never lived in a, in a free society, a truly free society. Uh, and what the, the enemies hope is that if they can take the United States, it'll stop this reversal that's starting to take place in Europe. Uh, and unfortunately, the Americans uh, are some of the most uh, zealous uh, Marxist-Leninists. Uh, they're the collectivists uh, that think they're leading the vanguard. And the, the attitude of the intellectual in America is that, well, the rest of the world messed up collectivism because they're not smart like us. We're, an, we're Americans, and we can make it work. Right? That was my next point, is that there, for 200 years, since the Jacobins in France, as you know, or 220 years or so, they've been trying to make it work. But that's their mid-level and low-level people. Getting into the deeper writings of the higher level collectivists, they're always totally mentally ill, into the occult, um, just really bad people that are attracted to power. Well, you always see that. You know, if you study uh, some of the great works that's been written on the psychopathic personality, what they tell you is the psychopath gravitates toward positions of power because that's what he likes. Uh, he wants to control people. He has no empathy. He has no compassion. Uh, so if you look at percentages of psychopaths, they're much higher in, in the larger megatropolis than they are in small cities, because that's where the power is. Well, the psychopath is also attracted to, to organizations that uh, have great power in the world. The more power, the, the more you're going to see a, a higher percentage of psychopathic personality. Some of the things I've heard, people would be shocked, because I, you know, I travel among people sometimes that are quite... Uh, powerful and wealthy that they're not on our side. And they're quite candid. And the things they say is shocking. They would never say it publicly. Uh, but hearing them say things about, uh, oh, they, you know, we should uh, sterilize all the old, the, the old people, I mean, the, uh, 
the poor people. We should uh, kill all the old people. You know, they're, they're, they're worthless. We should have a certain age uh, after 55 or, or 60 where uh, you're automatically killed. And, I mean, things that are just shocking. And, of course, they don't include themselves in any of these, these programs. You know, we, we've seen this repeatedly. Anybody who's read the history of revolution, you see these these personalities that have no uh, consideration for the public goal. I, I'm sure you've seen the interview Russo did with uh, um, uh, one of the Rockefellers. And he told him, he said, well, you know, you just we'll, we'll give you some identification and you'll be with us and you'll be protected. He said, well, what about all the other people? He said, what do you care about them? Uh, so you see this callousness. Uh, you know, one of the things I look on the Internet and I see where everybody's making fun of people that go to Walmart and they have all these pictures of the Walmart people. And you read the comments below that say, oh, they ought to kill all this trash, all this garbage. You know, they're just subhuman. Well, uh, on a lower level, that's the same way they look at everybody else in society. Uh, to them, uh, the vast majority of the population is just... Uh, a huge population in a Walmart. But but what's even sicker is they then try to dumb down and sabotage people to make their claim that we're scum true. Sure. That, that's what makes it ten times more evil. Well, that's why they destroyed the educational system because they you know they've shown it through the polls that uh, a large percentage of the, of the graduating seniors from high school have no idea when the Civil War was fought. They have no idea who Christopher Columbus was. I mean, just things that are just unbelievable. And you think we spend more on education than any country in the entire world? They spend more to screw them up, and we have the government and documents. We're so uneducated about things that you just essentially have to know. Well, you see, this is another thing, Alex. Hold on, Dr. Blood, like we got to go to break. These are hard breaks. Final segment, sir. Come back and get to that point straight ahead. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Uh, Dr. Blaylock, you got cut off by that break. I'm sorry, they're satellite breaks for the station, so they're hard breaks. You were saying another thing, another important point, and we had to go to break. Uh, what was that point, sir? Yeah, that's all right. Um... Well, one of the things that I've noticed, I'm 68 years old. I've seen a, a fair bit of uh, history. Um, one of the things I've noticed that has just changed drastically in the last 20, 30 years, an incredible apathy of people. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, they, they, For instance, there's a case in Georgia where uh, children who bought Christmas cards uh, that had uh, references to Jesus or or the true meaning of Christmas. They took up their cards, took them away from them. They didn't want any any such Christmas cards. You know, if you say happy holidays or or ha happy Wiccan witch day, then that's fine. Which is a clear violation of the First Amendment. They sure. can personally hand out whatever they want. But the, the, the point being is that the parents didn't really react. One or two parents uh, uh, showed displeasure. And another case where they were telling the children they need to go on an Islamic uh, tour. You, you need to go to this museum, and they were getting indoctrinated in Islamic faith, and they had to read the Quran. And some schools they were having to dress in the Islamic dress, and so on and so on. And yet, uh, the parents just apathetically accepted it and signed the release forms and the permission forms. And I'm seeing this all over every every kind of program that's just an absolute outrage, outrage by the TSA abuse, outrage by the new militarization of the police, and and on and on and on, and, and it's just, it's always met with apathy. Well, you know, that's just the way it is. Well, we need to be protected against the terrorists. Well, we we need to know what people are thinking and protected against the shooters. And they take their guns. They, they, they do one thing after another, and, and it's always met with apathy. Now, part of that is, is, is uh, exhaustion because uh, we're inundated from every angle. And that's one of the things Pavlov taught uh, Stalin, that if you take an animal and you exhaust it, uh, you can make it do almost anything you want it to. You can easily retrain it. Uh, the other thing is all these, these massive vaccinations, fluoride, aluminum, all these things we know that produce apathy in the human brain. 
Uh, I think that, uh, you know, there's a real push for uh, people taking uh, uh, psychotropic-type drugs. Uh, large numbers of women are on those things. So they're, they're in an apathetic state. They can't really respond emotionally. So one thing is, is, is let's fight this apathy. Get people involved. When a school board allows something like that or a children to, child to be abused by some ridiculous attack on Christianity, uh, they need to all work to have all of them removed from office. You're right. We have to get out of the trance-like state and get out of the state of just being broke back, putting up with whatever they do. We have to learn to resist because resistance, the spirit of resistance to tyranny, is victory. BlaylockWellnessCenter.com. I know you have a newsletter with Newsmax. Uh, dot com as well. You never want to plug any of the great things you do at the Wellness Center, but in the 30 seconds we've got left, uh, how do folks uh, get your newsletter? Uh, well, they can go to that website and they can uh, sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, you know, one of the most important things of all is to pray and, and return to your, your understanding of your relationship to God and to Jesus Christ. Uh, th that's being humiliated now. Well, you know, people need to read their Bible and read it very closely, and read the the uh, interpretations, uh, the analyses, because if you take it word by word and you pay attention, you'll see everything that's happening today was predicted. Uh, everything that uh, we need to do in response is told. So if we read our Bibles, see the sacrifice that was made for us, and the the fact that this message from God was given to us uh, a thousand years ago uh, on how to deal with this, uh, that's our answer. And so people need to return to that. They're trying to humiliate us, make us look like fools who think of these things uh, with the, the elevation of science to the all-powerful. All things have to go through the filter of science. Well, I've spent my whole life in science. I know a lot of science. And I can tell you that the truth is God created everything. Evolution's nonsense. Uh, they know it's nonsense, but they readily admit the only reason we adhere to socialism and uh, evolution is because uh, without it, we would have to believe in God, and we don't want to. But the evidence is on the side of God as the creator. So it's overwhelming, uh, doctor. It should be. It's overwhelming. I have studied the elites, and none of them are atheists. At the top, they are all into the occult. They all sure. believe they're going to become God. And so they're trying to act like God, but the fruits of these people is living nightmare. I mean, it's like if you go to a restaurant and the food's terrible, you know it's a bad restaurant. We know collectivism is slavery. Well, you know, if you look at the, the historians who write most about the origins of politics, it originated from Gnosticism. And Gnosticism is what we consider occultism, and it's growing like wildfire. And as you say, all of these people at the top are Gnostics. Uh, they're enemies of Christianity. The energy, they're enemies of, of uh, people who believe in God. Uh, so they're they're occultic, um, and most of them were theosophists. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a theosophist. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Hitler was a, a, a uh, member of that society. Uh, well, you know, this is they're created by the Russian Blavitsky. And I just read one of the great historical works on it by a, a, a Oxford scholar named James Webb. And he goes into meticulous history of all the people throughout history who belonged and its enormous control. This was a very powerful organization. And they believe they're dialing in to spiritual entities. Sure, and Lenin was a member of the Theosophy, and so was Stalin, and so was uh, Trotsky. Uh, so it was uh, Hitler's henchmen. They were all members of the Theosophy group. They were trained by it. They got many of their programs out of Theosophy. Most people don't know that the youth groups came out of Theosophy. Uh, so, you know, we, we need to wake up, pay attention, quit telling, uh, having other people tell us what we need to think and believe, and don't respond to the, the charge of... Uh, uh, that makes us feel humiliated. We need to stand up for what we believe. That's right. Uh, exactly. Move forward. Have a great week coming up, Dr. Blaylock, and we will continue uh, to track what's happening and hopefully get you back on a routine basis. Thank you so much, Dr. Blaylock. Thank you, Alan. God bless.